Welcome back to this edition of Mr. Abayomi Says. We've got Jeff Kirk in West Virginia. How are you today, sir? Uh, not too bad. It's a little overcast, but it's nice out here. So good times, good times. Glad to be on the show again. What's up? All right, good stuff, good stuff. So we're just going to uh, jump right into this. A um, couple of things we talked about on a uh, pre-show, the sleep monkey. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the sleep monkey. <laughs> Yeah, if you work a nine to five or any other type of job, you know, if you get in there early, somewhere around two, two thirty, that sleep monkey jumps on your back. He boxes way better than Floyd Mayweather and will have you bobbing and weaving in whatever job you're doing until you get up and do something because you work hard. Everybody works hard. So, I mean, but that sleep monkey is undefeated. Oh, yeah, boy. that's true. Sometimes it puts you in the sleeper hole and you're just like... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Trying to thank stay God. awake. Yeah, thank God you don't have a meeting at that time. Good Lord, that could be bad. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yep. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we got a good laugh out of that the other day. So we're just going to, you know, segue into the nicotine monkey. Now, I'm a former smoker. I smoked 23 years. I gave it up, what, about 12, 13 years ago now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I good believe so. I tell you what, one of the hardest things I ever had to do was quit smoking. And um, there's there's no magic bullet. There's no magic pill. Uh, just like you start hot, you got to stop cold. I, oh, absolutely. I've, I'm still a smoker, but I've quit several times for lengthy periods of time. And like a dumbass, I went back and, you know, started smoking again. But each time that I've done it, it's been a cold turkey thing. And you just have to get through those first three days. And then after that, you know. That's true. It's a mental thing. You just have to keep telling yourself. And when I'm ready to go back and stop smoking again, I will. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's completely mental when you do it. You have to have the discipline. I have discipline to do a lot of other things in my life. That's just not one of those things I've been focused on. But I need to, you know, for my family and for myself. So I'll get there. For me, when I quit, uh, and this is back when I was still attending bar full time. In fact, I was, uh, I was attending bar two places. And so... I picked my worst day uh, to actually do it on, which was Saturdays back then, uh, because I would open up one place, close in like another place, and it seems like the one place I was open up on Saturday was completely, a complete disaster from the previous night. <laughs> so uh, I'm in there pitching a bitch about who closed this place last night. It was a disaster. And so um, we're always short staffed, and then I went on getting my ass handed to me like on a Saturday and then I had to go from the fire straight to the fire pan uh, sure. down to the other place and get my ass handed to me again not being set up by the daytime bar staff from the place I was going to so I found once I was able to you know get to you know that Saturday I was like wow I made it through a Saturday and then that mm -hmm. Sunday wasn't much better either but then I got to Tuesday I was like wow I made it through the the hardest days of the week, and I was like, let me see if I can make this a week, and then a week turned two weeks, and two months, and then before you know it, I was a year in, or two years. Uh, one of the, you know, the hardest things were spicy food and drinking and being around smokers, but, you know, <laughs> I got over it. Indeed. Indeed, one of the, the, I remember the first time I actually quit, I had only been smoking for a couple of years, but I went to basic training. And it was one of those, that was one of the hardest things I had to do in my life, not to quit smoking, but it was a basic training, you know, right. but I was able to get through it. And like I said, within a couple of days, I had to even out those, their first couple were hard, you know, but mm -hmm. you know, after that, you know, it, it's about filling that time that you used to use for smoking to do something else. I this didn't is know true. that much. You know, if you can fill up that time with something else that, you know, will benefit you as opposed to what smoking is doing to you, you know. You can make it, and, and I will get back there. Like I said, you know that's that's on my you know bucket list. I, I just well, hope it doesn't make me. I'm not knocking you. Beforehand. You know, it's just something that we happen to talk about in pre-show. I thought it was worth talking about. So <laughs> yeah, I, so, I, I, I just hope it doesn't help me kick the bucket before I get it off my bucket list. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> how about that? Well, it was on the bucket <laughs> list, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, so um, Will Smith apologizes to Chris Rock. Um, what's your take on that? Yeah, about I thought that. His, 
Uh, yeah. I thought his apology was well constructed. I thought it was heartfelt, uh, you know, well thought out, you know, and it needed to be said. However, at the same time, he's not completely at fault. And I think I'm on his side on the whole incident. I think he did exactly what uh, a married man is supposed to do when somebody comes out of pocket and talks about your lady, you know, in front of the world, in front of her. You had that kind of gumption to make a joke that, you know, everybody else says is seemingly innocuous. I don't care. It's, yeah, I don't care how, you know, you know, innocent it was supposed to be. No, you, you were completely in the wrong by making that joke, calling her out by name. If you were on the streets, you know, he knows it just as well as anybody else. You know, that's one of the things we learn when we're younger. You don't make fun of people's family in front of their face, in front of them people. That's the quickest way to get your butt beat. You know, he only got smacked and he got lucky. Anybody else would have dragged him all across that stage. Yeah, you know, I think Chris Rock was firmly in the wrong and he set that whole situation off by being wrong. Mr. Smith reacted, you know, everybody's like, well, it's the Oscars. It was this and that. Sorry, I'm going to go back around. Uh, everybody said he was wrong because he was on the Oscar stage and, you know, he shouldn't have done that in front of those. No, that's exactly where he should have done it. So people know, you know, that's not something you do. You don't insult a man's wife in front of her, period. What reaction did you expect? True. Yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, I thought, I thought that it was good that, you know, he did apologize to him. Sure. Um, you know, I thought that it was good that he apologized to Chris, you know, Chris Rock's mother. Um, sure. Also, you know, to his family. And then also to Quest Love, because Quest Love was about to receive his, his Oscar for work he sure. did. And that definitely took the spotlight off of one major accomplishment. Sure. Um, so, you know, I, I, I thought those parts of the apology were, were definitely well warranted. Um, I, you know, I, I do understand where you're coming from uh, because I believe you made you know, very valid points there as well. And um, I mean, it's just like, you know, why, you know, why he even thought it was appropriate to, you know, go after, I mean, the guys, you know, white flight. I mean, it's, it's just like, in, in terms of, in terms of, you know, the amount of influential black people in Hollywood, that's a real small circle right there. So sure. for him to say that he didn't know, he knew. Absolutely. He knew that she was having some other... issues with the hair and like everything else. And I mean, it's just like, I just, I don't subscribe or buy into that. And he should have known better. Um, at some point in time, I mean, it'd be nice to see the, you know, these two maybe, you know, squash this. I'm not sure. holding my breath. Um, but, um, you know, one thing Chris Rock is doing is just like he's taking this whole slap thing and running with it, with the stand up and stuff like that. So, um, you know, good on him, you know, to a point, you know, taking lemonade and, or taking lemons and making it to lemonade, as the saying goes. Well, that was the other thing that kind of has been, you know, kind of, you know, sitting in my craw. It's just been irking me through this situation. So, yeah, you know, you mentioned that he's been, you know, using it in his comedy and stuff like this. And, you know, now I call this the whole woe is me tour. I got smacked in front of everybody. Woe is me. Forgetting that his mouth started this whole thing. And That's he's true. Got a bunch of, and, he's got you know, a bunch we got a saying, we got a saying back in the hood, don't let your mouth write checks that your ass can't cash. Amen to that. And, you know, for him to be sitting there with some of the top comedians, you know, making fun of this incident and using it to make money. The, the, what was me? I got smacked on TV by Will Smith. Can you believe that? Oh, God, I feel sorry for me, and we're going to make some jokes. Miss me with that. Because, right. you know, what you forget is that your mouth was the thing that started the whole, the whole mess. Correct. Yeah, there is no woe is me in there. You got exactly what you deserved or exactly what you deserve for, right. you know, like you just said, letting your mouth write and check that your ass couldn't cash. It wasn't bullying. Right. It wasn't nothing like that. He got what he deserved for doing something stupid. 
Right. And I, I mean, for somebody who likes to um, run with the street cred in terms of, you know, where he comes from, man, I mean, like a lot of performers do that, you know, from the black community and stuff like that. I don't, yeah. I don't take issue with that. However, um, you know, if you're going to run on that cred, then you best honor the cred. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if you talk about it, be about it. If not, Correct. you need to be quiet about it. And, you know, this is one of those things. Yeah, you know, I read a couple articles. He's afraid of his anger, you know, for an incident that happened when he was younger. Okay, we've all had those incidents. Right, exactly. Well. But the, the one does not correlate to the other. You know, if he was about that life, he was, he was really about that, that the slap, that wouldn't have been what we would have been talking about. It would have been a huge brawl after the slap that we'd have been talking about but no you didn't you stood there you took it because you knew you were wrong that's usually the only time a man stands and takes some crap like that you know is when he's in the wrong and he knows it. i agree so, i agree the, yep. the whole what was me tour miss me with that nah, i'm not even down <laughs> yeah. nah yeah he needs to apologize to will smith just as much as will apologize to him go somewhere for three months and meditate on that there you go. Okay. I can deal with that. So, well, you know, while we're still...